Thank you. Um, so, quickly about me. Um, so I'm, yeah, mostly active in the Python uh, space. So core developer of Pandas, GeoPandas. Um, and I'm currently working at Volton Data on the Apache Arrow uh, open source project. So that's something you can chat with me as well. Uh, so this talk will give an update about uh, GeoPandas. Um, I did it here, easy, fast, and scalable geospatial analysis in Python, but so, um, yeah, focusing on, on vector data, on tabular vector data, uh, making this more accessible in, in, in Python. Um, there is a bit of history here. Given this is not a Python-specific conference, I will give a very brief um, intro to GeoPandas as well. Um, so it's mostly extending existing libraries. So there is the, the Pandas library to work with tabular data, it's extending that to uh, work with geospatial data, building on top of the, yeah, the open source geospatial tools that uh, people here are, are uh, familiar with. Um, so how does it look like? You can, in Python, uh, interactively or in a script, uh, for example, read some files, and your data has a geometry column, in this case, for example, polygon data. Um, you can use the existing pandas functionality, so if you want to work with the attribute data, filter on, on, a, on a column or calculate something on a column that's still available, but in addition to pandas, it gives you access to a lot of uh, geospatial operations, for example, like calculating here the distance, um, in a very wrong way because I have latitude, longitude data, and that's something to be aware of in GeoPandas or a limitation. GeoPandas by being based on geos, it assumes a, a Cartesian plane. So you need to take uh, a, yeah, care of that yourself to uh, reproject if needed. Um, and for example, we then also implement uh, things like a spatial join. So here I, I um, added to the, the, the bike stations examples in which district it is located. Um, all of those things, uh, features, built on, on other libraries. So as a summary, you can use it both interactively um, or in, in a scripting way. So in very much like how, um, you could say like how PostGIS extends PostgreSQL, GeoPandas extends uh, Pandas. I have a few um, highlights of, of new features in GeoPandas itself. Um, although I will be very quick here because the, the more interesting part of the presentation uh, comes. Uh, afterwards. One nice thing, it's, it's a small but it's still convenient, is that there is a new explore method. Uh, it was said to me that I had a mouse to scroll so I could actually show it. Apparently that's not here so I, I can't show that it's actually interactive. Um, um, but so that's something new based on Folium and Leaflet. Uh, in addition to the traditional Matplotlib based static figure uh, that uh, GeoPandas has already provided. So that's uh, another example. Um, we already had the spatial join. Since the last release, there is also uh, an addition to that family of functions to join on, on the nearest uh, geometry, so not an exact uh, predicate, um, but a nearest. And for example, it also gives you the ability to do a, a max distance uh, uh, search. Um, there is better integration with PostGIS. There are some other, uh, many more uh, improvements in the, in the last releases. But so what I want to focus on here for the rest of the talk is, um, yeah, explain some new developments on, on the, the level below here. Um, because, so as I mentioned before, GeoBandas is, is really built upon some other libraries. So under the hood, um, we have Geos, for the spatial operations uh, using the shapely bindings to it. Uh, GDAL for reading uh, and writing files through the Fiona uh, bindings approach for uh, reprojections. And so um, there has been quite some active development to improve um, some of those bindings, which of course also directly benefits uh, users of Pandas. And it's mostly um, focused on improving the performance of those bindings. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, the Shapely uh, Geos bindings, um, which is about Shapely 2.0, which is, is coming 
uh, shortly. So taking one step back, what exactly is Shapely? It's a Python binding to the Geos C++ library. Uh, Geos is also used by PostGIS, by uh, R, uh, by many other tools that provide geospatial vector operations. And so Shapely provides a nice uh, Python interface to work with geometry objects, points, line string, polygons. You can do all kinds of operations on them. Um, but so Shapely itself is limited to single objects. Uh, it also has no like, direct ability to, to attach it with, with attributes, information. And so that's how GeoPandas extends like, the functionality of Shapely by putting um, those Shapely objects in a column in your uh, data frame. At the moment, how GeoPandas does that is by having a column where we actually put Shapely objects. So if you do a certain operation, for example, you want to calculate the distance of every geometry in your column to some other uh, geometry. We iterate to those objects in Python. So basically, uh, in, in pseudo code, it would look like that, but it's basically what is happening. In a Python loop, we loop through the geometries. We call Shapely. Shapely is calling uh, Geos. Uh, and this uh, gives a, a bottleneck, in, in, in performance bottleneck in, in GeoPandas. Uh, by doing this loop in Python, it, it gives uh, quite some Python overhead. So and if you want to improve the performance here, uh, what we need to do is to bring the loop uh, a, a level lower and bring it to uh, where we are calling Geos. So that's in, in Shapely. Um, and so that's um, what we have been doing the last years. Uh, it was started in a separate package in PyGeo, started by Casper, uh, who is somewhere in the room here, over there in the back. Um, and he, he created PyGeos to have a new way to work with those uh, geometry objects uh, based on, on arrays, assuming that you have arrays of data, not just a single object providing vectorized functions and doing this uh, much uh, faster. In the meantime, PyGeos has been fully merged into Shapely to bring those new uh, improvements uh, to, to Shapely users as well. Shapely has been refactored to, to use a C extension instead of C types to make it more robust, uh, have all the new functionality from PyGeos while also keeping the familiar interface for people who are already using uh, Shapely. Um, and so to give you a small uh, idea of what it looks like, um, so as I mentioned before, at the moment you do need to do a manual for loop if you have lots of uh, points, in this case, lots of geometries. Uh, you need to write your for loop yourself. In Shapely 2.0, there is, a, a, in this example, a contains function that will do the uh, array-based operation for you, and that will also, it's, very similar as NumPy functions that broadcast, so if you have different shapes of arrays, uh, it follows the NumPy uh, broadcasting rules. So this is more convenient also if you have array of arrays of data. Uh, and because the loop is no longer done in Python but in C, it's also much uh, faster. So a very simple benchmark here, one million random points, a single polygon, checking whether the um, all the points, for all the points, whether it's contained in a polygon, you see a very uh, nice uh, speed up. Similar for distance, uh, again, a nice speed up. The, the exact speed up depends very much on the operation you're doing. Uh, if it's a very cheap operation in Geos, then the overhead in Python is relatively larger, so you have a, have a bigger uh, speed up. Another example, but more integrated into um, uh, an actual yeah, more application, uh, like the spatial join in Pandas is under the hood using the str3 from Geos. Also there, we improved the performance to do uh, queries in bulk uh, using the str3, and so you also see that the spatial join uh, improves a lot. A lot more other things as well, more bindings for, uh, for additional Geos functions. Um, yeah, the str3 already mentioned uh, improvements there support for the fixed precision model in overlay functions that Geos um, uh, has since a few releases. Releasing the GIL so you can do multi-threading. We don't provide that ourselves, but it's possible now. Uh, and so the full release notes um, are available in the documentation uh, for the well upcoming release. There are a few API changes. Geometry objects are now immutable. Uh, we removed some 
yeah, features that made it more difficult to work with arrays of geometries, for example, uh, geometries are no longer um, um, iterable, which means that if you would like, if you have a multi-polygon and you want to loop through every polygon that uh, the multi-polygon is made of, you no longer can just iterate to the multi-polygon, but you need to iterate to the dot geoms attributes. Something that already existed before as well, so you can write code that is perfectly compatible with both the old and the new uh, way. And we also have a migration guide with all the details on how to update your code to be compatible with 2.0. Um, but the status, it's fully integrated. We had an alpha release, um, a first alpha release of Shapely 2.0 in July, planning a next beta release in, in the near future. And so please, how can you help? Try it out, test it with your code, install 1.8, fix all the deprecation warnings, then install 2.0 and see if it still works, and give us uh, feedback so we can make Shapely 2.0 a re reality in the, in the coming uh, months. So, that's for Shapely. Uh, moving to um, the, the next one, GDAL, to, uh, for reading and writing uh, vector file formats. So, what GeoPandas currently uses in its real read file function or to file function, um, are the Fiona bindings uh, to GDAL, but very similarly as in Shapely where um, we had a, a, an interface for single objects and we needed to loop in Python. The same actually happens in Fiona. Fiona is providing an interface to uh, get record by record and again, uh, that gives a lot of overhead uh, and that's something we can improve. Um, and in this case, it's not done in Fiona itself, but uh, with some GeoPandas developers, we created a new package, PyOgro, um, to also yeah, here vectorize the, the, the um, IO on top of GDAL. Um, so it's very much focused on what GeoPandas needs. GeoPandas just wants to read a full layer as a table at once, uh, get it or write it. With, um, and that makes that um, PyOgre, by focusing on that aspect, can be faster than Fiona, uh, but it also makes it much less general purpose, so it's certainly not uh, meant as a full replacement of Fiona. Um, we also have wheels for Windows, uh, so that makes the installation a bit easier. Fiona actually now has as well, um, but hopefully that will also improve the installation situation a bit. How can you use it directly to uh, using uh, PyOgreo uh, here on top? Or you can actually use GeoPandas, the read file function. Uh, this should have been geopandas.readfile, sorry about that. Uh, and you can specify the engine uh, PyOgreo instead of Fiona. Uh, and the goal is to make that the default in the future. Because it gives some nice speed ups. Uh, so the, here is the example for reading um, yeah, a large geo package file um, with polygons, uh, building outlines, and you can see that it uh, takes more than three minutes to read it with GeoPandas using Fiona, uh, and it got, goes down to uh, 25 seconds uh, using PyOgreo. While at the same time, and that's on the other uh, side, using uh, less memory uh, while doing so. Um, the exact speed up will very much depend on like, the characteristics of your file, uh, the file format, but we generally see very nice uh, speed ups using PyOgreo. Um, so again here, it's a very new package, so you're very welcome to install it, test it uh, with your workflows and give us feedback um, if something is, is not yet fully working as it should be. Um, Taking one step back on, on this, how this, how this works with, with the Python bindings and GDAL. So um, GDAL is reading data from, or writing data, uh, but focusing on reading, reading data from all kinds of file formats. And then the Python bindings, and this is true for both Fiona or PyOgreo, um, they get the features, um, get the, the data row by row using the get next feature API of, of GDAL. Um, and so this is still, uh, even though we can optimize and, and, and call this uh, function 
uh, in Pyro, if you're on the, on the, in Cyton, so it's compiled to C, at the lower level, it's still overhead to have to do this feature by feature. Um, and that's something that we can improve. So this, uh, how this data is moved from GDAL uh, having it read to the bindings such as uh, Python. Um, that's something we can improve and uh, that's where uh, Apache Arrow also uh, comes into the picture. Apache Arrow provides um, yeah, a standardized in-memory um, format for tabular data. It has some uh, specifications around it. And so there is a new, um, well, uh, there was a proposal and it's already implemented and accepted coming in uh, 3.6 by Ivan Rouault, the main developer of GDAL. So to have a column-oriented API that you can, given a certain layer of a data set uh, and a certain um, a selection, um, give me the full data uh, from all columns for all rows at once using uh, the arrow uh, specification. And so going back to our example uh, uh, from before, this certain file, also here you can see that it still, uh, on top of the improvement that PyOrview already did, gives another uh, two times improvement for this specific file and for geo package, because it again depends very much on the, on the format that you're uh, reading. So that's not yet something you can use directly. It's, I, I this is with GDAL master, but that's coming in the, in the future as well. Um, what I showed here, um, and uh, also in the, the, the previous, well, in this slide, so here I was using geo package, um, we can improve the performance of, of, um, of reading those files um, that GDAL can read. But another way to improve your I.O. performance um, is to yeah, look for another file format. And uh, that's where I quickly want to mention GeoParquet. Um, I have too many slides about GeoParquet, so I will be, try to be very brief. But Apache Parquet is an existing um, um, file format, open source, available in many languages to read. Um, it's column oriented, that's an important aspect of it, so it's very much made for tabular data and to have efficient reads from, for tabular data. Um, and it's a widely used file format. Um, so what do we want to do with GeoParquet uh, is not to create a, a new uh, file format, but basically standardize how in the geospatial community, we can use Parquet to store uh, geospatial data. Um, so specifically, what data type to use currently, uh, we are using well-known binary, but we can improve on that in the future, and how to store some metadata about the coordinate reference system, um, the, the geometry type, uh, et cetera. Um, you can already read and uh, write in, in Python, and comparing here again with um, the same um, yeah, uh, buildings file, um, you can see that uh, Parquet is uh, still a lot faster than the others. Just a note, this is tested with Pyogre without the Arrow integration. Uh, so, yeah, if we could make this two times faster, but uh, even then Parquet is uh, still a bit, uh, will be a bit faster. And especially when reading only a single column, so that's what you don't really see here. Um, because of being columnar, it's very efficient to only read a specific uh, column. It's fast, and at the same time, it can also manage to uh, provide you very small, small files, so it's very optimized regarding compression um, while still being fast to read. Um, some history about it, uh, we are still, it's still new, evolving, so again, feedback is very welcome, uh, but I, want to mention a last part very quickly because I don't have much time, um, is that GeoPandas, everything that I've told, uh, Pandas, GeoPandas, uh, works nicely and we can improve the performance, but as long as the data that you have fits in memory and it's also only using a single core. Uh, so that's also something that can be improved um, and, and that's what Dusk GeoPandas is trying to do. Um, so Dusk is a project to provide parallelism. Um, very briefly, uh, it creates a task graph under the hood for the, the tasks that need to be done uh, and then has a some scheduler both on a single machine but 
to use all your cores or on a distributed uh, server uh, with multiple uh, nodes. And for data frame, how it works under the hood is that you have a chunked data frame where each chunk is a pandas data frame or in our case, a geopandas geodata frame. And that way it can um, build up a task graph and each task will say for this chunk, do that computation, uh, for the other chunk, do that computation and it can be spread across cores or across uh, nodes on a, on, a, on this distributed cluster. Um, so thus Geopandas is giving this um, integration um, very much as the Dask data frame already exists and is extending Pandas. Dask Geopandas um, uh, does the same for, for Geopandas and so we have a very familiar interface um, as Geopandas. There is already uh, support for uh, parallelizing I.O., all the basic element-wise geospatial operations, and the spatial join as well can uh, run in parallel or distributed. And there is some basic support for spatial partitioning. Um, and uh, given the time, I'm going to skip this one. I also can't scroll, so that's no problem. Um, it's a very young project, so this is a bit like, yeah, alpha uh, project, but it's, yeah, it's certainly ready to be tried out. Um, there are still things that we need to improve, like having full coverage of what GeoPandas can do. For example, we don't yet have an overlay uh, function, making, making better use of the spatial partitioning information. That's certainly something to uh, improve, but um, it's certainly ready to be used for the, the basic use cases, and here are some links to the uh, documentation and, and tutorial. Well, so that's uh, it. I want to end with saying that a lot of what I told is not, are not things that is just uh, things that I did, but so it's from the whole uh, community around it with many uh, contributions from other people. So thanks a lot to uh, those people. Thank you very much. We have a few questions. Uh.